Hi guys, so I'm going to read All-Star Comics number 11. So this story is the one that was written right after Pearl Harbor. And it's also, I was mistaken before again, this is actually Wonder Woman's first appearance as a Justice Society member. In the, well, I, th I think she's like um, like an honorary member or something, but it's, she's basically a member of the Justice Society from my here on out. But the Justice Society joins the war on Japan. Another book-length adventure featuring the Hawkman, the Atom, Dr. Fate, Sandman, Dr. Midnight, the Spectre, Starman, Johnny Thunder, Wonder Woman. And there's an advertisements for some comics. Superman, Flash, Batman. Um, I can't see that one. I think, oh, I think that's Sandman or Starman, maybe. It's Green Arrow. It's, um, who's that? Shining Knight, maybe? Uh, the Wonder Woman, I read that one. Uh, Green Lantern, so yeah, Big Eight. And Justice Society of America. De seven, December 7th, 1941. A treacherous, sly attack upon the Pearl Harbor Naval Base at Hawaii by Japanese bombers. And simultaneous raids upon Wake Island, Midway, and Guam. The Philippines undergo parachute attacks. All of, of America rises to the savage challenge. Bomber. So yeah, there's a lot of... There's a lot of stuff against Japanese, so I'll, I'll try to... Japanese people, so... Try not, not to say that, but anyway. Bombers sink a Japanese battleship. Marines gallantly defend their country's um, soil. And aircraft carriers launch fierce counter-raids. The Justice Society of America explodes with righteous insignation. They too demand their chance to fight for the country they love best. And so, at this memorable meeting of the Justice Society, once again we have Hawkman, Dr. Midnight, Sandman, Starman, Adam, Johnny Thunder, Dr. Fate, and the Spectre. As guest star in a national emergency, Wonder Woman. And... So, uh, there is a subtle tenseness in the air as Hawkman waits for the other members to appear at the meeting of the Justice Society of America. Hmm, how can I break it to the boys that I'm leaving the Justice Society to enlist? Uh, what will Hawkman say when he learns I'm going to enlist at Kent, Kent, Kent Nelson? Now that we're in it, we've got to show those tricky dogs what it means to whip pick on a free country. Hello, Hawkman. Did you see the headlines? As a ghost, I can't enlist. Don't tell anybody yet, but I'm going to enlist in the army as Al Pratt. I wish I could go, but I can't. Huh? Why can't you? Hiya, Johnny. What's new? He looks worried about something. I, uh, hello, Starman. I received your wire and came at once, Hawkman. I assume it has to do with the war. It has. Silence, please, everyone. In the past, our society has done what it could to help our country. We've smashed spy rings and we've helped to secure defense weapons. But now things have changed. I was a little worried about how to tell you this, but as Carter Hall, I'm going to enlist in the U.S. Army. You'll have to get another chairman. What? Yep, yippee, that's the best news we've heard yet. Hooray, or hooray. Well, you can't have, um, liked me as chairman. You're all so glad to get rid of me. Oh, boy. You got us wrong, pal. You see, we want to enlist, and we were afraid of telling you. And you broke the ice first. Hooray! But wh why didn't you say so, then? The boys thought you would keep them here guarding against invasion, again, instead of letting them join the colors. And we wanted to fight for Uncle Sam. Oh, ha ha. We all wanted the same thing, and everybody was so, so scared, was scared to say so. Ho <laughs> ho. What are you laughing at? You just said you couldn't, can't join the army. Why can't you? What do you mean you can't join the army? I suppose Daisy and Peachy Pet would be proud of you now. Yeah, I don't know what that... That must be like a slang term for like a like a uh, draft dodger or something. But. You fellows, I have it all wrong. What's holding you back? I can't join the army because I'm going to join the Navy. Oh, and you were kidding us all this time. But a serious mood overtakes the members as they set forth to answer their country's desperate need. 
West Dodds, Carter Hall, and Kent Nelson respond to duty. Hurry up, you city-bred sissies. We're gonna make men out of you. Uh, I don't know which is which. I think, I think that's supposed, that guy's supposed to be Sandman. Um, Carter, okay, so who, and Kent Nelson, I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that's Carter Hall. There, that formality is taken care of. Al Pride and Ted Knight sign up while Johnny Thunder heads for the Naval uh, Enlistment Station. Wonder what branch will be assigned to. Funny, I've been wondering the same thing. Fine physical specimens, gentlemen. The Army needs men like you. As a ghost, I'll just keep on busy. I'll just keep on busy working on the home front. There's plenty to do. Carter Hall, the Hawkman, is assigned to the Interceptor Coast Command. A TY-20-0000 in the language of the Advanced Flying Cadets. He begins his lessons in the art of flying a United States pursuit plane, the fastest flying airplane in the world. Uh, I have only a few months to, uh, in which to make flyers out of you. That means you have to buckle down and work. A few months. I want to fight before that. Intense activity in the school room. Students learn that the necessity, necessary mathematics flight commands, lessons, and blackboard bombing techniques. I have to control my impatience. These studies are essential to a future flyer. The big day arrives. Carter takes his first solo trip as his instructor confidently watches. As he lands, Carter Hall is met with good news. I'm passing you now, Hall. You're going into the Coast Command with Major Nichols here. That's what I've been working for. That's what I've been working for, sir. You're going to be uh, congratulated for turning for turning out men like him. Huh? I didn't have, or, hmm, I didn't have to teach him anything. Uh I had to be at home in the air after years as the Hawkman, but they don't know that. At the home base of the coast, First Interceptor Command, a daily flight information ocean patrol. patrol. As Carter Hall brings his ship down, Jera, what are you doing here? And in that uniform? You didn't think I'd let you go off uh, to war by yourself, did you? So you've tr turned nurse. Good girl. If all the nurses are as pretty as you, the boys will, with, will all rush to get wounded. I'm sailing tonight with a convoy towards the Philippines. Can you send me off, or see me off? His temporary leave secured, Carter and Shiera dine, then seek the convoy ships. Look, Carter, that girl is movie actress Carl Williams. She's an air raid warden. Just shows how everyone is rallying to do their bit. America's proud of everyone, of her 135 million people. Look here in the ship's nurse. I wonder if... Uh... Oh, or in the ship's uh, register, Diana Prince, a nurse. I wonder if that girl is this Wonder Woman I've been hearing so much about. The Justice Society's known of her double identity for some time. Don't you dare leave me to find out. And a few minutes later, Goodbye, Shira, and good luck. Uh, we'll bomb the first interceptor command, gain air control, and our ship troops will attack the Frisco. In the ocean, uh, passing the convoy in the dark, comes a flat fleet of deadly Japanese aircraft carriers. As Carter Hall returns to his station, a smashing Japanese raid demolishes many planes. Into the air! There's one less plane we have than pilots! Shh, oh, go, uh oh, something tells me this is my cue. A hidden change of clothing beneath his bed enables Carter Hall who appears the dreaded Hawkman. No one will stay behind. I'm the Hawkman, and part of your squadron. Can I borrow the submachine gun, sir? Well, the Hawkman. All right, boys, all of you go up, then. The American warbirds rise to the attack. Every bomber has its blind spot where guns cannot be brought to focus. Hawkman unerringly darts straight for the place. these places. The, ta the Hawkman sure can fight. He's down three of their bombers already. Into the San Francisco Bay, the Hawkman drops the last bomber. That finishes that threat. 
Troop ships. A Japanese invasion is planned. I gotta warn the city. In the attacked city, Carol Williams struggles desperately with ha uh, hastening throngs. Don't run, please. There's plenty of time to get the, sh the shelters. Japanese bombers overhead. Hey, hey, that's the same man. With a little help, I think we can get the people back in hand, Miss Williams. If you can help me. Come on, boys, we've got to show courage. With your help, we can organize this crowd and get the people safely to their shelters. Sure thing, Hawkman. Yeah, boy, keep them flying. With the help of the young admirers, the Hawkman heads the people into the air raid shelters. Everything is under control, thanks to those young fellows. The streets are cleared. Now to do a little fighting on my own account. Meanwhile, under cover of darkness and bombing attacks, crowded Japanese troop ships near the west coast. They will be so frightened there will be no resistance. Muffled engines bring the invaders closer and closer to the docks. They will never suspect we would attempt a landing at this spot. A lone policeman patrols his beat. Uh, they've landed. And I'm all alone to face them. Here's reinforcements. Let's see what they can do against the two of us, officer. Praise be the Hawkman. We make a good reception committee. Look at him run. Uh, a devil man is after us. His furious assault um, drives them back into the water. Maybe this will help to get you started. Our infantry is moving up fast on trucks. I hear them now. I'll let them take over on the docks while I pay a visit to their troop ships. I need some ammunition for this attack, so why not take it from the enemy? Just drop down for a visit. Here's my calling card. Snatching a torpedo from the rack, the Hawkman rises once again to the attack. The torpedo, Hawk-propelled, hits the water and forms its way straight to its target. I'm too small to make a target for gunfire. Boom! This is my invitation of a dive, dive bomber. The Japanese anti-aircraft guns roar into action at the dive bombing Hawkman. Hit him, hit him! He sunk three ships, smashed our landing party, and our bombers! Can't anything stop that man? Those shells are getting close. There's only one safe place. And that's right on top of their own flagship. A squadron of coastal bombers arrives on the scene to take over the heavy fighting. Good work, Hawkman. Wish he was in our squadron. Hello, boys. It's your turn to take over. Reporting back to the first interceptor command. Oh, Hawkman. The Major's been looking for you. The ship convoy that left Frisco a few hours ago uh, may have fired upon the fleeing remnants of their attacking force. I want you to patrol the convoy. I'd be only glad to. I'm more than an ordinary interest in this assignment. Shier is on one of those ships. There, there it is, streaming along pe as peacefully as if there were no war at all. Meanwhile, Shiera, a nurse aboard one of the ships in the convoy, has made friends with another nurse, Diana Prince. Oh dear, I can't st stop thinking of Carter. This war is separating us, but it's for the good of the country. Why do you, don't you stop worrying about that sweetheart of yours, Shiera? Of course you'll see him again. Maybe very soon, too. That's so sweet of you, but with a war on... Oh, well... The shadow, look! Here I am, all set to see that you arrive safely in the Philippines. Oh, Hawkman! I'm glad, I'm so glad to see you. This is a nurse friend of mine, Diana Prince. How do you do? Shiera must be a two-timer. She's glad to see Hawkman, she was mooning about Carter Hall. Diana Prince, why, well, you must be Wonder Woman. Uh, what? How did you know? The Justice Society manages to learn many things. I'm glad you're going to the islands. We can use your help. Later, Diana takes Shira to task. Hawkman and Carter Hall are both so nice. Why do you keep them both dangling? dangling? Choose one of them. Oh dear, I'll die laughing. <laughs> Carter Hall and the Hawkman are the same person. After all, you should know about their double identities. Oh, my f is my face red? I'll never meddle again after that. I'm glad you think they're both so nice. It makes me feel wonderful. With the beauty of Aphrodite, the wisdom of Athena, the speed of Mercury, and the strength of Hercules comes Wonder Woman. 
the Amazon maiden, she has decided to put her strength against the evils of total invasion, and as Diana Prince nurse, she finds herself on duty in the Philippines. I'm Diana Prince, detailed to serve with the Ambulance Corps. Oh yes, Miss Prince, glad to have you. There's been a little skirmish on the coach, coast near Vigan. Can you join our forces at once? Can I? And how? Going towards Vigan, buddy? Uh, sure thing, sister. Hang on, we'll be there in no time. Like an angel of mercy, Diana Prince ministers to the wounded members shot down while defending their country from attack. We beat him back, but they're coming in with bigger forces all the time. I know you did, but you mustn't excite yourself. You must get well for another crack at them. The wily Japanese strive once again for their foothold on the island as the Marines fight them off with heavy losses. Outnumbered, but not outfought. I'm proud to be an American. I wish there, I was, there was something I could do to help them. Mm, Hawkman fought as the Hawkman, so why can't I get into this free-for-all as Wonder Woman? Armed with the twin bracelets and the golden lasso given to her by Aphrodite, Wonder Woman stands ready to aid the soldiers. We'll see what they do now. Eek! She shields herself so fast, so surely. We can't hit her. But I can hit you. To make a little more fun, I'll borrow your guns for a while. If a woman can do this to us, what can the men do? I'm not staying to find out. You won't get away by running. Uh, wind whistles past their ears as Wonder Woman shows uh, the Japanese how to run. The party's over. Let's find the American commander and surrender, shall we? I don't want to, but something forces me to say yes. And I too. Wonder Woman makes use of her magic lasso. <laughs> There's no use in trying to save face here either. Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman reporting for duty, sir. Here are some uh, of the enemy I've tried, caught trying to land. Am I glad to see you? I could use you, if you'll help. The Japanese are making landings on other parts of the island. I haven't enough men but to patrol those spots. I need some exercise. And you've got plenty to do here. Just leave it to me. Along the hardened sands races Wonder Woman with the speed of Mercury. At this pace, I'll be there within a few minutes. Somewhere in the northern part of the island, Japanese boats beach their crews. That officer was right. They are landing. I'll be a committee of one to welcome them. This'll kill them. Oh, what an awful pun. But it's the best I can do underwater. The... Uh, must have ripped the keel off the sum on a submerged sandbar. Go to swim for it. One after another, the boats fall apart. A whole landing party has been wrecked, and half the men don't know how to swim. Uh, come along. Oh, Jesus. Come along, uh, person. Yomp! Order your men back to the troop ship, or I'll be forced to really get rough. All right, I'll do it. The Golden Lariat serves its purpose again. No one can refuse Wonder Woman's commands uh, when it's in its coils. They're leaving faster than they came. The thing is to keep them away. And now for some of the other islands. Mm, there must be a quicker way of covering them than swimming. A Japanese plane! I'll let him serve the purpose. With an accurate toss of the Lariat, Wonder Woman is lifted high above the treetops and carried along. You're away off your beam, buddy. Head south. I'll let you know where to let me off. Eek! It's that female dragon we heard about. I'm even stronger when I get angry, so don't let me make me lose my temper. I wouldn't think of it. You can let me off here. I see trouble ahead, and I'm going to meet it halfway. Now for a little mopping up. This is going to be fun. Crack. Don't go away, boys. The show's only beginning. Swish. Ouch! No! Oh. Swish. This invasion is going to be mighty unpopular after all this. I get what you mean. Right in the face we get it. Keep in line until the boys get here. Hey, fellas, it's Wonder Woman. Ouch. We're all march in to see the Major together, boys. Swell. You heard the ladies, what the ladies said, so start moving. You did a magnificent work, Wonder Woman. A reconnaissance plane informed me of your disposal of the two landing forces. That gives us control of the situation. For the time being, anyway. Does does that mean you won't need me anymore? I should say not. 
We're making you an honorary member of our detachment. Unanimously. Yeah, Wonder Woman. This is the second time my face is red, but I'm enjoying this. Wesley Dodds arrives on Wake Island, whose marine garrison has written a chapter of unforgettable history by their unparalleled defense against smothering odds. Just in time to take over as the Sandman um, and give the boys in khaki a rest. A training base, West Dodds with hundreds of others, all anxious to serve Uncle Sam. Won't be long now before I'm sent overseas. Lesson, lessons in firing the big steel anti-aircraft cannon, or, or, or uh, 37 millimeter anti-aircraft cannon, are followed by sighting the, so, the 50 caliber machine gun, deadly enemy of the low-flying planes and dive bombers. Extremely accurate shooting, Dodds. You skipped through this course in less than a half time. You're all ready for the real thing. Thank you, sir. Must as well, might as well put this outfit under my khaki. Never can tell when I'm able, liable to need it. Heavy troop planes fly the much-needed reinforcements to Wake Island. Mighty glad to have you boys. The garrison here has been fighting uh, without rest so long. We're asleep on our feet, almost. Wish there was some way I could help them get the rest they need and still beat off the enemy. That night, West Dodds is restless in his cot and, and barracks. I volunteered to stand guard tonight, and that was turned down. But that's no reason why I can't be on the lookout. Shadows lighten uh, near the gaunt buildings as a golden figure emerges into the moonlight. I saw one of those captured two-man subs today. Hmm. One of those might do the trick. It's unguarded good. Plenty of fuel and torpedoes. I'll have me a nice time circling the island on the lookout for anti-aircraft -air carriers. The man of might mutters in delighted tones. Dead ahead in the periscope beam, Japanese aircraft carriers. All the comforts of home barracks. Even a telegraph with a code posted onto the wall so the Japanese won't forget it. Uh-oh, here's where I send a little message to the Japanese. When the carrier hits... Uh, his message is received with puzzlement. Oncoming American fleet threatens to intercept you. Scatter to save as many as possible. Shin no Marusa. Shin Marusa never heard of him. Neither did I. But we cannot disobey information like that. Orders flash to all units of the carrier fleet. They turn in mid-ocean and flee north, south, west, and east. Rose O'Day, Rose O'Day. I am your Shina... Morosha da da da. Um, good good name, uh, that. Now to let the garrison know. A message from the Sandman, sir. It says a Japanese carrier fleet is miles out to sea. He's intercepting them. The Sandman, did you say? He's done wonders wrecking Fifth Columnus, and now it looks as though he's doing the same thing with the Japanese. I'll say it does. Uh, I mean, yes, sir. Here's while I do a little invading myself. Everything all set for a dawn attack. I'm allowed to fix things so no plane will leave here for a while. The silent, powerful wire poon drills hole after hole into the airplane tech gas tanks. Five bullseyes in a roll. Not so bad. I can't uh, let them go to their doom without warning them. Ahoy aboard! Fire, fire! Look, a man going overboard! There'll be a hot time in the old town tonight. They're shooting pretty close. Oh. Yeah, okay. So they're shooting pretty close. I better submerge before they drop their charges at me. With the velocity of a bomb, the man of might shoots through the hatch and kicks off over the submerging lever. Down to JV Davy Jones' locker, pronto! As silent as a fish moving through water, the two-man submersible finds another of the fleeing ships. Um, one torpedo less, one carrier less. There's another off the port bow. I'll take care of him personally. The driving smash of the wire poon needle, a mighty form hurtling through the air. The salmon has landed. I'll have the situation well in hand in a minute, too. 
Frantic messages relayed from sinking ships have warned the this carrier commander. They're here. There he is. Fire from here at will. But be sure to hit him. Uh-oh. Somebody is being spreading stories about me. I gotta get a better weapon than my wire poom for this sort of fighting. Snugly encased in a warplane, he turns its guns on the bridge. That is sought to make those, um, those guys sorry they started this. The same man's aim is true. Douglas bombers. Looks like I'm getting some help here. And some mighty fine help, too. There's the old tornado down below. Uh, feeding Japanese bullets to Japanese sailors. Uh, hope he has some way of getting this message. Sandman fires his wire poon at the falling metal cylinder. Come to Papa, baby. A word to the wise is sufficient. Uh, you... Oh, what is that? You hog. Okay, you've taken over three of them. How's about leaving the rest for... Uh, we're in this war too, you, your buddies. And you dumbbells had to pick on men like that. I pity you. A prize crew boards the carrier and takes in it into Wake Island. Come on, tell us who you are. We won't spill. Afraid you, we can't, I can't do that, boys. You see, this war won't last forever. And I'll be back battling crooks someday. And gossip spreads. That's right. You can go ashore and into your uniform, Sandman. No one will follow you. And I can add, we're mighty proud to have you with us here at the island. That goes double, sir. Oh, sorry about that. So, Alprat, Al diminutive Calvin College sophomore, endowed by nature with supernatural strength, is known to the crime-fighting fraternity as the Atom. But he joins the colors of his country as plain Al Pratt and is assigned to the tank corps of the United States AEF. Pratt, you drive, the, the others go along just for the ride. Yes, sir. The modern t fighting tank has no steering wheel. Its turns are manipulated through pop proper handling of two brakes. The temperature inside a tank often rises over 100 degrees, and it's mighty tough going over bumpy uh, ground. Yeah, this baby bucks worse than a rodeo killer. Fine work, rookie. You handle that tank like a veteran. And, hmm, interested in becoming a tank sergeant? I certainly am, sir. A tank sergeant must know all about his tank. Handle two-way radio, read maps, shoot machine guns like an expert, and file his forty-five caliber pistol with good accuracy. What? Nothing else besides all that? That red-headed that red guy must be Buffalo Bill himself. Not a miss in ten shots. Well, you can handle an automatic, anyhow. Let's get on to the next test, Lieutenant. I'm going to be a tank sergeant or bust. Al doesn't bust, so soon after his studies begin, and he passes his test brilliantly, uh, Lieutenant Gordon says you've proven an apt pupil. You are to be awarded with your tank sergeant stripes, and you will leave for Thailand to fight the Japanese. Yes, sir. Heavily convoyed troop ships sail into Singapore ready to aid their embattled British allies. We we'll remove the uh, ale from Thailand. Into the action go the big American war tanks, rumbling and crashing through the dense trunk jungles. Headquarters ought to be near here. Sergeant Pratt of the AEF Tank Corps, reporting for duty, sir. May I ask for the uh, difficult assignment you have? You've come to the right place for that request. The Japanese have broken our lines here at Kota Baru. They must have reinforcements of their own circle our entire flank. I see. Perhaps my crew can stop them. Come on, fellows, we're going up to the front. Yippee, we'll feed them some hot American lead. Guaranteed to end all your troubles. Uh, into this region goes the tank corps to bolster hard-pressed lines. This is like a map forest... Koka Sharu, I guess this commander. Uh, a Japanese attacking forces, British defense crumbles here. Al's attack, attacking tank corps to bolster defense and start counterattack. Bumbling, lurching, firing cannon and machine guns. The armored column smashes into the front line of the attacking men. 
Go get him, Yanks. Get him what we for. Uh, oh, go get him, Yanks. Get him what for. We will, Aussies. They're falling back. They're retreating. After him, we'll show them what uh, we think of their treachery and double dealings. Into the forest smashed the American tanks. Brashes, branches, uh, bulls, and bows fall before their onslaught. They're on the run! Behind the tanks, Australian and British infantrymen charged to mop up odd groups. But the tanks soon outstripped their allied forces and find themselves attacked in turn. They've outmaneuvered us. We'll be slaughtered. I gotta do something to save my buddy. Here's the military strategy that trapped the core, the tank core. So Japanese lines, tank core. Japanese lines cut off tank core and surround it. Japanese lines forming to hold off British, British infantry. Sergeant Al Pratt heaves himself up through the turret of his tank. About time the Adams started doing something here and now. This tough wood will make some ideal crowbars. A fantastic figure drops to the ground beside the Japanese tank. Heave ho, over you go. This'll make a swell barricade to stop those other tanks. Inside the overturned vehicle. Ouch, yo! Working like the proverbial beaver, the atom upsets tank after tank. With their forward motion, they can... They're a cinch to lift. Oncoming Japanese tanks crash into their own overturned mates. The Adams leaps into one of their tanks. I tank, I take over. Jeez, that's, that's like the worst part I've ever heard in my life. That's horrible. I tank, I take over. Look at that. It's horrible. No! Oh, how did he get in here? Never mind how I got in. I'm here and I'm here to stay. He make himself right at home, some home. When polite people meet their bow, or they bow, that's right. Oh, oh, anyway, but the mighty might leaps for the machine guns. This attack from the rear ought to convince him that they've been surrounded. His hail of lead smashes paralyzing blows at the rear of the attacking tanks. They have us on all sides. Retreat, retreat. Take him over, boys. Yippee, it's the Adam. Heavy tanks race side by side with the Atom into the thick of battle. They wanted this fight, but I wonder what they think about it now. Hold your fire, they're quitting! Surrounding by the swift traveling Americans, the remnants of the Japanese tanks yield. Keep walking, uh, you who are surrendering. Uh, why didn't you let on you were in our corps, Adam? Yeah, we're mighty proud to have you. Er, it's swell of you fellows, but I joined a fight at... at as Al, that is my other self. You did it, Yanks. All loins and are ho holding now. You boys won't be fighting alone now. We're with you for the duration. Whoever you are in uniform, Adam, we're all proud of you. Guess I better get back into that uniform and join my tank unit, sir. There's more fighting ahead. And it isn't over by a long shot. Kent Nelson has volunteered for that toughest of all army jobs, the parachute troops. At Fort Benning, he trains with his comrades for active service somewhere in the Pacific. The troops are rehearsed on the intricates of handling their chutes. Maneuver a chute by chugging at the risers. To the right of you, if you want to go that way, and left for that direction, pulling all the risers lets you make more a more rapid descent. Now we'll try you out. It, uh, in the extremely short height of the 70 feet, 750 feet of, off the ground, it takes only three and a half seconds to hit from that height. The men jump. Remember, if it doesn't open automatically, pull your chest releases. If we have time, we will. Jump after jump, endless rounds of target practice. The result, a well-trained, um... As well trained a group as slim pullers that ever stepped into a plane's pop prop wash. Uh, you chaps have been yelling for action. Now you're gonna get it. The Japanese have attacked our some of our bases in Unalaska. Is it, you mean in like regular Alaska? Is that Alaska? Is that like the old name for it? I don't know. Anyway, but um, 
a thinly garrisoned force of uh, Alunian Islands, uh, or Aluthian Islands, fights an overwhelming Japanese landing force. Give the little punks their rat. Give the little punks their rations and shoot to kill. Outnumber the Marines fall back, des fighting desperately. Back towards the sea speedboats near the docks, men. A handful of survivors escapes. Oh, I hate to be in their shoes when we send some troops to recapture that island. Hastily manned troop planes fly the new parachutes towards the captured islands. You know what to do. Land, take over the positions designated, and establish communication posts. We're almost there now. Over the captured island, the troops hit the air. Here they come. Move them down with your guns. Those machine gun nests are wiping out our whole force before we can land. I've got to go into action. You fellows are making a lot of noise. Since I, I like quiet, I'll begin enforcing it. Well, always remember silence is golden. He makes a lot of noise beating us up. So what? When a man fights like that, he can do as he pleases. These weeds prove an effective gag. No sense in having you warn the others what's going to happen to them. Don't, don't, uh, don't he know he's dead? We, we are winning, but why did nobody tell him about it? My body of pure energy does not fe even feel those bullets. But you're going to feel something. Five mighty hard knuckles. Five? Is that all? Feels like a hundred. They'll never kill any more or the they'll never kill any more Americans with this thing. Meanwhile, the parachutists have opened the colored equipment uh, parachutes which contain weapons and needed ammunition. I saw some guy in a blue and gold outfit dart past me and start mopping up those machine gun nests. You know who that was? Dr. Fate. Hey, Dr. Fate, wait up. We're going with you. Uh, for, come on, then. The first thing we've got to do is disorganize their communications. I'll take the gunners. You silence the radio. I need much help. Need help very bad. This gun will, won't see any more service unless I use it. Help too late now. And I think I will use it at that. Instead of manning the gun, I'll gun the man. Lieutenant uh, Mary Koto, headquarters, calling. What is happening? Turn, turn it off. Let him worry a bit. Oh, tell, turn it off. Let him worry a bit. There's nothing like worry to gnaw an enemy into making a foolish blunder. There's their headquarters down there. Now here's my plan. I'll go down and divert their attention while you boys approach from the rear. Count on us. All the way. When I'm in a hurry, no roof can stop me. But our communications have ended. And I'm sure I heard some firing. What do we do? I'll answer that one and win the four dollar prize. You'll surrender to Uncle Sam, right? Right? Uh, he came through the roof, but he can't do that. No, I'll show you how. Watch closely. Help! Don't worry, we'll catch you. Uh, we'll catch you, right in the uh, points of our bayonets. No, no, we surrender. All right, don't catch him then. Looks like a, a couple of perfect one-point landings. Where are the ships that you brought here? Are they bringing more? Yes, orders have been for forwarded to reinforce this garrison in the hopes of it capturing all Alaska, then to invade Canada. Ambitious program. Ambitious and possible. Unless we stop it. I'm heading out to sea. What a guy. Boy, am I glad he's on our side. Here they come. Now for a little dive bombing, a la Dr. Fate. His entire body composed of pure energy which cannot be destroyed. The man of mystery forms himself into a human bullet and blasts right through the battleship he attacks. Now for a torpedo attack. Better get on, better get on deck. The ocean won't wait very long. One after another, the ships slowly settle and sink beneath the waves as the human missile slams them as no bomb could ever do. Why didn't I think of this before? I don't believe it. You will when you hit the water. Well, that's the last of the Japanese reinforcements. Alaska is safe, at least for the time being. The place is yours. 
and if you'll give me a chance, I'll duck into my uniform before the brass hats arrive. Remember, it's just one of you fellows from now on. Right, your secret is safe with us. The mysterious Dr. Midnight, who can see in the dark, an owl hurries back to his home, anxious to do, to do his bit for his country. Ooh. Come on, Hootie, it's off to war we go. I'll be wearing another uniform for a while. Wonder if I just join up with the Army, Navy, or Marines. And Dr. Midnight becomes once more the blind Dr. McNider. Think I'll make it the Army. But gosh, I forgot. Everyone thinks I'm a blind man. What am I going to do? In order to fight crime as the mysterious Dr. Midnight, Dr. McNider has been posing in his everyday life as a helpless blind man. Actually, he can see with the aid of special infrared glasses, but no one knows this. The doctor makes a difficult decision. To serve my country, I'll have to give up this helpless pose. I'll tell Myra the truth. Is Dr. McNider really going to reveal the secret that makes him such a powerful enemy of crime? Wait. The answer depends on a fateful bomb uh, falling thousands of miles away. In a tiny island outpost in the Pacific, an army hospital is cruelly attacked. Bombing hospitals! Those inhuman beasts! One of the victims is a research scientist working for humanity. Dr. Benson, you're hurt, badly hurt. Never mind me, the serum must be saved. Only one man can complete the work. I've started here. Dr. McNider, tell him. Oh, he's dead. We must reach this Dr. McNider at once. Yes, Doctor, I'll wire his headquarters. By radio, word flashes to the medical corps headquarters in Washington. Years of research work at stake. Get Dr. McNider in this phone at once. Yes, sir. At that very moment, Dr. McNider is about to reveal his secret. Myra, there is something I must tell you. Yes, Doctor. Oh, excuse me, the phone. You want Dr. McNider to do special servants in the medical corps? I'm afraid you don't realize. The doctor is blind. Wait, Myra. Let me speak to them. Yes, I'm familiar with Dr. Benson's work. Be glad to do what I can, even if I am a blind man. I have to bring my assistant along, though, to read my, his notes for me. Fine. But, doctor... And so, Dr. McNider is in the service of his country without giving away his secret. We're in the army, now... I've just been commissioned a captain in the medical corps, and we're heaving at once for the Pacific War Zone. We must salvage what we can of Benson's work, with tropical fever. Doctor, I'm so proud of you. A short time later, Dr. McNider and Myra reached their posts in the Pacific. What's this? A blind man reporting for duty? He's Dr. McNider, sir, here to carry on Dr. Benson's work. You can work here. I'm afraid you'll find the notes badly damaged, but I wish you luck. Thank you. We'll do as what we can, Captain. And so each day, Myra reads to the blind Dr. McNider from the damaged notes. And in 147 cases, Solution K, That'll be enough for today, Myra. I have to think over what you've read to me. But in the darkness of night, Dr. McNider carries out his real work. Glad I brought you along, Hootie. It would be lonesome here in the dark. Whoo! Benson was right on the right track. I'll be able to complete his research here at night and dictate to Myra in the daytime. She'll think I'm, an, I'm a mental wizard. Hello? What's up, Hootie? Hoo, hoo, hoo. Like his pet owl, the doctor is able to see through the moonless night. Enemy planes, dozens of them. Thanks for the warning, Hootie. I'll have to warn the, the garrison, but not as blind Dr. McNider. Once again, the doctor becomes that weird creature of the night. Dr. Midnight. This will have to be another job for Dr. Midnight. We must get that to that searchlight. Halt! Uh, who? Gee, I thought I saw someone. Must have been a set shadow. Dr. Midnight arrives on a surprising scene. Their favorite sneak play. Contact with the enemy. Here, here, little fellow. You mustn't play with that. You want all of the Pacific? Well, here it is. Now to put this light to good use. Dr. Midnight quickly spots the enemy planes in the pitch black uh, skies. The anti-aircraft guns swing into action. Nice work. But look, back there, beyond the woods. Whoo! Parachute troops. Have to take care of them before they do any 
damage. Happy landings. Easy picking. Coming down thick as flies. Can't handle all of them. Udi had to think of something else. Wait, this one looks like a big shot. I'll blow this whistle and see what happens. Uh, a shrill blast of the whistle uh, bailing surprising results. Or brings surprising results. Under the cover of darkness, Dr. Midnight quickly disarms the invaders. I hit the right, right signal. Had to do a little souvenir collecting of guns. Helpless without their weapons and frightened by the strange terror that strikes at them in the darkness, uh, the Japanese are soon in a panic. Um, I don't that I don't think that word's a slur though, because um, Jap Japan's actual name, like what they call it, is Nippon. I'm pretty sure that's what they actually call Japan in their in their own country. It's called Nip. I'm pretty sure it's Nippon. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, I might seem really stupid by saying that, but I'm pretty sure it's called that. That's what um, that's what Jap Japan calls their own country. But yeah, it's called yeah. I, I think it's, it's it's supposed to be Land of the Rising Sun. I think it's translated. But as soon uh, or soon in a panic, eek! Like a shepherd, Doctor Midnight herds his flock through the woods. I feel like Little Bo Peep. Halt! Who goes there? Doctor Midnight with enemy prisoners. Look, what that guy, Dr. Midnight, uh, drove in here. Yeah, then he disappears into the dark. What a man. Well, my work's finished here. Better get back to the lab. And in the next morning at the doctor's office... Dr. Midnight, Dr. McNighter, that attack last night. Do you know who stopped it? Dr. Midnight. Can't we lose that comic book hero of yours? Even out in the here in the middle of the ocean? And now Starman... So, for once, in, in answer to his country's needs, Ted Knight forgets that he is a sickly youth and joins the Air Force at the great training pace at Randolph Field. He takes his place with the other pilots. Ted, I don't know whether I'm going to like this flying stuff. I volunteer, but I'm plenty nervous. Uh, there's nothing to it, Ash. I mean, you'll catch on easily. Better be careful. As Ted Knight, I'm supposed to be a sick man. But as Starman, I'm used to traveling through the air. Ted proves to be an apt pupil under the exper expert guidance of a flying instructor. In the plane of today, the instruments are everything you fly it by them. Put in all your trust in them, and they won't fail you. Ted is among the first to receive his officer's commission, and is ordered to the Pacific. You are going to the war zone. Our nation depends on you. Keep that always in mind. Follow your orders. That's all. Out across the broad swell of the ocean, he pilots a huge uh, B-17. I think, yeah, it's, I think that's supposed to be B-17. Or... Yeah, I know, I know there's like a thing, B-17, a B-17 bomber, I heard about that. But inside the plane, Ted notices Ash's sudden pallor. Hey, Ash, what's the trouble with you? D don't know, my stomach's turning, handsprings, feel sick. Altitude sometimes does that to a fellow. It can't be helped except for some drastic measure. The B-17 reports for duty to Hickam Field, Hawaii. A trip satisfactory? Entirely so, sir. The plane worked like a charm. The men were all fine. Why didn't you tell him I flunked out? It's no good, Ted. I'll never be a flyer. Nonsense, Ash. You'll be as fit as a fiddle after a few more flights. You managed to pass your test, didn't you? Or will he? If he... If he passes out in a fight, he'll endanger the lives of the men on his plane. I don't know what to do. So that later, as Ted goes on to sentry duty to the army barracks, he worries about Ash. And miles away in the small island of Formosa, so Taiwan, the Japanese lay plans to deliver a shattering blow. We have the full strength here, so that we can raid the Philippines with our ships. We'll order the attack tomorrow at dawn. We prepare to attack Manila. Orders in the night bring American bombing um, crews racing to their ships. Heavy enemy con concentrations at Formosa must be smashed. Night, your squadron will, must bomb. The planes and ships gathered here. We will, sir. Night over the fast ocean, only the throbbing drone of mighty bombers disturbs the silence. Amplifiers pick up the steady uh, hum. 
American planes headed this way. Prepared anti-aircraft fire. Order our pursuit planes into the air to intercept them. A trap. We've hunted one into hundreds of them. We'll be smashed to bits. Oh, I skipped some. And within Ted's plane, Ash is killed over. The plane's on fire. This is going to be disastrous. Unless I can do something as Starman. A quick change of costume and the Astral Wonder Man stands ready to fight for his country. Gotta get out of here and take Ash and the others with me. Where's Lieutenant Knight? He's alright. I'll land you fellows uh, where you'll be safe and get back into the fight. It's Starman. After carrying Ash and the others to safety, the Astral Man returns to the fray. That's odd. All their bullets are exploding in the motor hoods of the bombers. Nobody can be that accurate in a dogfight. This time you're just wasting bullets. My gravity rod repels red lead. Yeah, someone said before, um, uh, like lead, like lead, um, like I didn't, I didn't know the difference between, I, I, I think I said in one video, I said lead instead of lead. Yeah, I am aware what lead means, like with the bullets, I am aware of that. So I'm, so I made a mistake in that video, so sorry about that. But repels lead. Put your head together, boys, while I take a look at that gun of yours. Crack. I thought so. A secret weapon. These bullets are magnetically treated to go straight for a plane's engine when it's in range. Well, two can play it at that game. Starman hurls himself at the enemy planes. I have a secret weapon myself. The gar gravity rod. Turning on the blasting power of the gravity rod that utilizes the tremendous power of the stars, the astral terror smashes plane after plane. Ash should see me now. While Starman holds the Japanese squadron at bay, the bombers unload their deadly missiles. Unknown to the astral man, uh, Ash is wait watching his exploits, fists clenched, jaw and muscles knotted. He feels a flame deep within him burn brightly. That human falcon is chasing me something. That if a man wants to accomplish uh, something desperately enough, he will. The fire on this crash crate doesn't hurt this machine gun. I enlisted to fight the Japanese and fight them, I will. Now I feel a lot better, and, and from here on, I'll get healthier and healthier. Meanwhile, Starman has attacked part of the great Japanese battlefield fleet itself. And I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I can say that one. Anyway, pardon my heels. Ooh. I'm sending a message and delivering a one-punch in payment. Attention all Japanese commanders. Unless you and the fleet together with all island defenses surrender at once, your men will be wiped out. The daring message is received by awestruck admirals. He can do it too. I read he has ruined the best ships in my fleet. It is either yield now or get killed later. The white flag snaps... To the mast over the island fortifications. That's only the beginning. Don't fire the thing again. We surrender. Headquarters in Hawaii receives an astonishing message. That bombing squadron I sent to Formosa has captured the place. Uh, now what? I don't get it. I do. Squat Starman was in that squadron. And he went into action. That's all. A quick change of costume and Ted Knight appears with his bomber crew. To find a different Ash ready to take over. Easy does it, pal. I'm flying this crate back to Hawaii. I got over my nosedive, thanks to that Starman guy. Guess I was right after all. Cool. So now Johnny Thunder. So Johnny gets up to the, his neck in trouble. This time in the Navy on an aircraft carrier. But that chuckling old genie, dumb luck, um, protects his own. And Johnny comes out of the fray as well as can be expected. Yow, how do I control this thing? I could tell him, but he's so scared he's forgotten all about me. But first he has to learn what to do and what not to do at the naval training blade base. Block the plane! Check it, quick! Hey, you look out! Oh no, uh, they wonder why they need so many men in the navy. Yow! Of all the dumb dodos. Didn't the fail captain... Tell you to check the plane. Are you a spy or something? Uh, yes, sir. No, sir. Did, I did try to ch check the plane, but I missed it. You missed it? I missed you. 
Lucky I did too. Uh, see here, Thunder. This is a, a, the chicken equipment. It isn't like a football game where you block a man with your body. Why doesn't somebody tell me these things? Oh, why doesn't somebody why doesn't somebody tell me these things? A couple of days later, after Johnny has had a chance to get in some more practice. Yes, sir. I learned it to uh, work that apparatus at last, but I can't understand why these guys all call me Death Trap Thunder. Uh Johnny Thunder, oh Johnny. It took a lot of wire pulling, but I did it. I had you taken out of here as a dis distinct hazard to the nation. I tried to have you put on an enemy plane carrier, but I couldn't swing that. Golly, that will be exciting. Going in the real action at last, this will be swell. That lad is a cog in the wheels of defense. Am I glad to be rid of him? Johnny reports to aircraft carrier Commander uh, Sewell. Ahem, your special abilities prompt me to give you a special duties. You can hang a picture up in my cabin, first of all. Hang a picture? Me? Well, if those are the orders, yes, sir. And in another part of the carrier, a renegade white spy is in work uh, for the Japanese. This hand will wreck the machinery that operates the landing gears. Other planes will be wrecked. All I have to do is put it in here. Making me hand pictures. Me, a member of the Great Justice Society. It's humiliating, alright. What's he up to? Lucky I locked that the supply door again after I swiped that hammer. A fine thing. I'll write my congressman about this. They can't keep their hammers locked up. When I got orders to hang a picture, bang bang. I wonder if they could keep a hammer in here. There's some machinery and machinery is always hammering. Doesn't this guy know that the, the Navy is very neat? They never keep hammers in the machinery room. Here's, here's one. Just what I thought. Funny place to leave it though. No wonder engines make so much noise. Trust a dope like that to upset my plans. I'm not licked yet. I'll rush the landing gear of this ship. I'll fix the bomb up in the laboratory and then blow up the gears. And I hang that picture. This isn't much of a bomb, but it'll have to do for the moment. Anyhow, it's powerful enough to wreck the machinery. About here, sir? Yes, that'll do nicely. Anything to keep him out of an important spot. I'll hide these matches and send them on an errand. Oh, I need mat some matches for my cigarettes. Will you get me some? Yes, sir. Just an errand boy. That's all I am. Huh? An errand boy. How, how can... Where can I find any matches anyhow? Say, you'd think they'd furnish their commanders with matches in this navy, wouldn't you? Not a match anywhere I look. I certainly wish I could get them a light. Say, you heard Johnny say, say you, say you. Those magic San bandesian hex words, didn't you? Now watch what happens. There's a light dope. See what's going on here? Oh, so that's how they do it in the Navy. Thanks, Thunderbolt. What am I going to do with a lack brain like that? Quite a cigarette lighter. Hmm. Looks like a bomb. Did I hear you say bomb? Why, it is. Johnny Thunder, you've discovered sabotage on my vessel. Uh, you I, I have? Here. That takes care of it. Always drop any bombs you might find into a pail of water, Johnny. Tell me, where's the spy? Uh, the spy? Right this way, sir. Fetch that spy. Here, Thunderbolt. You're so uppity. I ought not to do it. But he's a menace to Americans on board ship. So here goes. Here he is, Johnny. Commander, it is my pleasure to deliver the spl spy in person. Amazing. Perfectly astounding. Ha ha, I fixed you though. Oh, oh, I fixed you though. I broke your plane takeoff apparatus. You can't get your planes into the air now. And the Japanese are going to attack any minute. What? I wish I was in a plane. I could stop them. Uh, there's your plane. Now get going. Johnny, you'll be killed. Stop, I beg you. Such heroism. You mustn't sacrifice yourself. A fine way to treat a pe an old pal. What's this? Is Johnny's elbow throwing over the stick? 
He's gone. He'll be killed in the waves. With a screech of racing tires, Johnny's plane leaps forward and catapults over the side of the carrier, just as hostile Japanese bombers bear down on the aircraft carrier. We'll have to let him go. I can't spare a man from the anti-aircraft guns. Since the takeoff gear has been smashed, I can't bend up a plane to fight them either. Whoa, whoa! Thinking that if he pulls back the stick, the plane will stop, Johnny gives it a hearty yank, which results in a record-breaking climb straight up. Yo, help! Zoom. Oh, I'm gonna crash! I'm still alive, but who's shooting at me? His frightened hand instinctively thrusts forward, um, jam or jams down on the button that controls the, the his wing guns. Goop, did I do all that damage? Like a frightened bull in a china shop, Johnny blunders his plane in and out of the Japanese formation, dropping ship after ship. Flee before that fighting fool gets all of us. He bears a charmed life. The fighting fool doesn't even know when to let well enough alone. They're running away from me and I'm following them. The only trouble is, I don't know how to run away from myself. He saved the ship, boys. Look at him, chasing them all the way to Japan. I know it was dumb luck, but I feel sort of good about Johnny myself. So I'll get you back to the carrier safely. The Thunderbolt, my friend. It sure is good to see that ugly face of yours. Catch him, man. Poor guy, er, poor guy, he's exhausted. Uh, anybody got a bed they're not using? I've decided whoever sends that letter to me is jealous of you, Johnny, and I'm going to let you lead all of our air attacks after this. You sure haven't got any more pictures to be hung. If you haven't, I'll buy you some more myself. And now the end. So the, a meeting of the commanders of high rank in the American army find one subject especially popular. And if we're smashing all those invasion attempts, Hawkman flew up to escort a hospital convoy to the Philippines. I know, Wonder Woman was on that ship. You should have seen her in action. I still contend Starman's feet in capturing the naval base in Formosa, practically single-handed, is the finest performance of the war so far. Are you forgetting what I told you? Are you forgetting what I told you about the same man? Huh, you haven't seen him in action till you've seen him. You'll be my lifelong friend, but when you say the Adam is better than a better man than Dr. Fate, I fight. Then fight! Don't talk. That little Adam is more destructive than a ten ton demolition bomb. Gentlemen, please. I'll tell you who did the most. Dr. Midnight. Men of the Army, I present the Navy's proud boast, Johnny Thunder. We'll bring our men to here, too. Then we'll know who is the best among them. Let's do it. Or, let's do it. Radio our staff headquarters for the various members of the Justice Society to join us. Say so you don't have to do all that bother. My Thunderbolt will fetch them here. I'll be glad to see them all again myself. We'd go swell as a whole battalion, wouldn't we? What is this? A Japanese plot to kidnap us? Oh, it's you, isn't it? Johnny, don't you realize we're at war? We have to be back on the job. It's all right, fellows. The division commanders wanted us to get together, that's all. And we have a surprise for you. I'm commanding officer, Hawkman. Uh, do you realize you and your Justice Society are disrupting my army? Well, we try to be good soldiers. Disrupting the army? What's wrong? The trouble is, you make two good soldiers. You have all my division commanders fighting among themselves as to who is the best among you. This has got to stop. But what can we do about it? We'll do anything you say. Well, the army needs you, but I can't have my officers squabbling because of divisional pride and loyalty. So I have wired Washington for permission to make you a special battalion on Johnny Thunder's advice to be known as the Justice Battalion of America. It's certainly thoughtful of you, sir. Hooray, we can... Now we can act as a unit again. Uh, swell news, I'll say. And I think Wonder Woman ought to be a member, too. Just who is the best... Uh, just who is the best member, Hawkman? We still haven't settled that problem. Everyone is the best one. 
We all do the job we as were assigned in the best manner we can. And that's all anyone can ask. Hey, are we going to be an army battalion? I'm in the navy. Golly, I always have something to worry about. So the end. And anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you could like, comment, and subscribe, that'd be appreciated. Um, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you guys later.